Hi folks, this is Calc 1, Checkpoint Quiz 2. In number 1, we're asked to state the epsilon delta definition of a particular limit. So let's remember what the epsilon delta definition of limit is. The limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l means that given epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta greater than zero so that if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon so that's the definition for generic x going to c f of x equals l so in this case, what do we have? x is approaching c here, x is approaching 2. So c is 2. The f of x is x squared minus 6x plus 7. And the l is negative 1. So our definition would be the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals negative 1 means given epsilon greater than 0 there is a delta greater than 0 so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta then the absolute value of x squared minus 6x plus 7 minus negative 1 is less than epsilon. So let's remember what this means. We're trying to or we're trying to show that this function, the function values here, get as close as I want them to to negative 1 by letting x get close enough to 2. So that's what's happening here. Here I'm measuring the distance between the function values and the target limit negative 1 and I'm getting them close enough within epsilon by getting the x close enough to 2, namely within delta units of 2. So that'll do it for 1a. All right, in part b, we're given a specific epsilon. Epsilon equals 3, and we need to find the accompanying delta. So I've, I've rewritten the if-then statement from the limit definition to remind us what we're trying to do. Delta is how close we need to get to 2 so that this is less than epsilon and in this case the epsilon we're given is epsilon equals 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this inequality and I'm going to solve it for x and then see how that compares or, or see where 2 is in that solution set. So the first thing we can do is we can simplify this inequality a little bit. x squared minus 6x plus 7 minus a negative 1 is the same as x squared minus 6x plus 7 plus 1. So what I really need to do is I need to solve the absolute value of x squared minus 6x plus 8, then, is less than 3. So knowing what I know about absolute value, that means that negative 3 is less than x squared minus 6x plus 8 is, again, less than 3. And this breaks down into two inequalities. This is a compound inequality. So over here, I'm going to do this one. Negative 3 is less than x squared minus 6x plus 8. And then I'm going to intersect that because this also it also has to be true that x squared minus 6x plus 8 is less than 3. So this is a compound inequality with an and. How do you solve this inequality? Well, it's nonlinear. The highest power of x is squared. So we need to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. So I can add 3 to both sides and get x squared minus 6x plus 11 is greater than 0. At this point, we try to find the critical values. Those are going to be the points that we check around on the number line when we make our sine diagram. So to get the critical values, we set this thing equal to 0. And when we try to factor it, we're, we're sort of out of luck. So we would then try the quadratic formula. And when we try the quadratic formula, we would need to check the discriminant. So if I do that, I get 36 minus 44 which is a negative number. 
So what that means is this has no real solutions. This quadratic has no real solutions, which means there are no critical numbers, critical values for this inequality. That means I can go right to my number line and pick any test value I want. So I'll just pick a very convenient test value, 0. When I plug 0 into this equation, I get a positive number back, and that tells me that I have positive numbers everywhere. So that means that this is greater than 0 all the time. So my answer from this part is all real numbers. Let's see what I get from this inequality. Getting everything on one side, I get x squared minus 6x plus 5 is less than 0. And now I go off to find the critical values here. I'll set this equal to 0. And I have the exact opposite situation I had before. Not only do we get real zeros here, they're actually friendly enough. I can factor this thing. And I get x equals 5 and x equals 1 out of that. So I put them on the number line. So there's x equals 1, there's x equals 5. And now I pick test values around it. So I can still pick 0, for instance. I can pick 3 here. I can pick 6 there. And once again, it doesn't matter what numbers you pick as long as they're in those prescribed intervals. When I plug 0 in to this, I get a positive 5. And so anything else I pick in here will also give me a positive. When I plug 0 in, I get 9 minus 18 plus 5. That's a negative number. And when I plug 6 in, I get 36 minus 36 plus 5. That's a positive number again. I go back and look. I'm looking for where this thing is less than 0. It's less than 0 when I get a negative, and so my answer here is 1 to 5 on that interval. So what's my final answer? To get my final answer I have to take the overlap or intersection of these two sets of numbers. So you, you may have seen the intersection operation. If you haven't, don't freak out. I'm just trying to find what's in common among these two sets. And what's in common among these two sets is actually the smaller of the two. All right. So my answer to this inequality is the set open 1 to open 5. Well, what's that means in terms of delta? That's our next challenge.